Hey everyone, it's Karen and I am actually going to do a Tag Tuesday. This is the reread tag and I was tagged by books I'm not reading back in September. So let's do this. Uh, I have my iPad here so I can read the question. So if I'm looking down, that's why. Um, but this was created by Roz at Scaladate. I can't even say that word. It's created by Roz. Um, and I'll link her channel below. The first question is, let's assume you do reread if you're doing this tag. What do you, where do you sit on the rereading scale from almost never to all the time? So I thought that I was like rarely, um, however, when I actually pulled books, well, my cats are fighting. <laughs> when I actually pulled books that, um, I had reread from my shelf that I wanted to talk to you guys about, it's actually quite a few. So I'm going to try and fly through these questions so I can show you what I actually reread, but it might be more to like, I don't know, sometimes, <laughs> um, two, has that changed over your reading life? Um, maybe since I've become a teacher, some of these books that I'm going to share are ones that I've taught in my classroom. And so then I've obviously reread them, but it hasn't changed too much besides that. Number three, when do you reread? Maybe immediately after finishing a book or not till years later or when the mood strikes. So this really depends, uh, based on the book, but a lot of times it's for a book club. So it might be like a book that I've read and loved and want everyone in the world to read. And so then I will, um, reread it once I convince my book club <laughs> to read it. And I don't know, but sometimes it's years later. So it really, really just depends. And then... Number four, why do you reread books? I feel that when you reread them, that you access something on a completely different level than uh, when you read it the first time. I think the first time you often read for like plot and stuff, and the next time you can definitely dig deeper. Even if it's nonfiction, you get more the second time. You notice things that you might not have noticed, and that is why I love are these truths read along that we're doing because, um, like. I might read something and then someone else might read the exact same passage and different things stick out to them than stuck out to me. And so it's almost like you're rereading it because you're seeing it through um, the viewpoint of another person. Number five, um, how do you reread? Faster, slower, or just the best bits? I would say typically faster, sometimes slower, it just depends, but mostly faster. Number six, who or what do you reread more specifically? What authors or genres or individual books? I will show you in a second. I'm going to save that for the end. Um, is there a book you found better when you reread it? Okay, maybe I'll show you the books and then get to the rest of these questions. So um, I'm going to start with the books that are signed or I've met the author and then I'll go into my books that I've read but are not signed. So the first book that I've read multiple times, and I think everyone should read it at least once, um, but definitely more than once is even better, is I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Channing Brown. And what you're gonna notice is a lot of these are nonfiction, so it's a great time for me to do this video because yeah, you might get some ideas. This one just really breaks down like so many small, like, well, they're not even small, but they're uh, racist things that you may be doing that you may not even notice. Or um, it also kind of gives you like empathy from someone else's point of view so you can really understand their perspective. And I just absolutely adored it. I met Austin Channing Brown, but um, it was actually like I was in a bookstore and she was in a bookstore and that was it. Like she wasn't there for an event. We were just both in a bookstore so and then the next one um animal vegetable miracle i read this all the time i find it so inspiring and if you listen to it on audiobook barbara king sullivan has the most soothing voice i met her in chicago uh two three years ago yeah anyway she is amazing and i love this book Another one is There's No Such Thing as Bad Weather. This one I've told this story of before, but basically um, I picked this up from the library because I saw that it was about Sweden and I'm very interested in sw everything Swedish. And um, I started reading it. I was in the bath and this person was, the, the author, was describing this scene from her hiking that she did with her kids. And the more she described the place, the more I felt like I had 
been there and like she kept describing it and I was like yes I know for a fact where she is talking about absolutely it's one of my favorite hiking places yes I have been there so I like forgot about my bath got out wrapped myself in towel found her social media and messaged her and I think I got an answer the next morning that yes I was aware of where she was talking about even though she did not name it in the book and actually we were neighbors and so I told her I collect signed books these are all signed um do you have a place where like a bookstore or anything where I can get a signed copy of your book she told me that I could either order it from her and she'd send it to me directly or um there's this coffee shop in a town not too far from me because like I said we're neighbors <laughs> um, where I could get a copy of it. And so I decided, well, it was like some sort of school break, maybe spring break. I would have to look back on my blog entry because I wrote about this experience and I'm like, I'm just going to go to the coffee shop. It'll give me something to do. I love coffee shops. I love just cozy spots that kind of take away all the distractions so you can just read. And so I went to the coffee shop. I got myself a little snack and some coffee and I just sat reading for a while. And obviously I bought the book too, but I was just kind of chilling there. And I cleaned up and I was about to leave. And guess who walks in? Linda. She recognizes me. I recognize her. And she gives me the most giant hug. And we chat for a few minutes. And yeah, then I go on my way because I didn't want to bug her. She was there for a smoothie with her kids. But oh my gosh, such a good book just on, I didn't even tell you what it was about. So there's no such thing as bad weather. It's basically the importance of getting your kids outside and um, all the benefits of nature and all the problems that kids have because they're not outside enough. And I found it really inspiring for myself too. Like it motivates me to get outside. And in fact, right after this video, I'm gonna go um, to a park or something or just on a walk, I'm not sure. We'll see, I'm gonna wear a mask. <laughs> the next book, which I want everyone to read is I Miss You When I Blink. Particularly, I think Sarah from Your True Shelf would love this book. Um, but this is by Mary Laura Philpot, who's amazing on social media too, if you want a new friend. And um, she just writes um, this book of essays, which is like a memoir, but it's told in essays. And it is about basically how sometimes adulthood is not what you anticipate. There's a lot of things going on. And sometimes you just want to like start over, but you can't just like quit your job. And you can't just like move like you have kids you have responsibilities you need money and um yeah so this is kind of like just all her stories from adulthood dealing with difficult things dealing with hilarious amazing things um it will make you laugh it'll make you cry and i absolutely loved it it's kind of like a mom blogger sort of a thing but even better because she can write <laughs> The next book I actually am is due for a reread for me and that's Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. I also met her um, and I can't remember if this one is signed. I think um, she did not sign this one but I did meet her so I allow it on my signed shelf if I've met the author. Um, but yeah I have the newest book by her which is Jack and I really want to uh, read this one and read the others again before I read Jack you can read them all separately. So it's not really like imperative that I do that, but I just want to. And Gilead is one that I reread more slowly because I feel like there are just so many good quotes from here. And it's a very like thoughtful sort of theological sort of book. And so, yeah, you can pull a lot of quotes from here and just really reflect on what you believe and why and life and stuff. Uh, like I said, most of these are nonfiction. So here's another nonfiction, at least in the city, someone would hear me scream by Wade Rouse. This book is hilarious. I would recommend it to a lot of you if you just need a nonfiction that is not serious because as I'm going through my nonfiction, there's a lot of really deep, dark stuff it seems like in my stack. And yeah, so this is about a gay couple who... I forgot where they were living before, but they moved, they were in like a really fun area and they moved to rural Michigan, um, this town called Saugatuck, Michigan, which is where I go all the time shopping and stuff like that. But they're like outside of this upscale trendy like town and they're in the rural part. And so it's just them like trying to survive. I'm pretty sure they moved there in the middle of the winter. <laughs> like it is so funny and I also met the author of this I um 
obviously, but I went to an event and it was with a local bookstore that was featured on a movie, by the way, but anyway, um, I was kind of early and this bookstore's events tend to be kind of an older population and not like crazy excited about books like I am. I mean, they are, but they're not going to show up like super early, like to wait in line and make the line and all the stuff like I usually do. So I kind of was waiting in my car and whatever. And I was just like on my phone posting about how excited I am. And, um, I decide, okay, it's time I get out of my car. And at the same time, the person next to me tried to get out of their car. We didn't hit our doors or anything, but we were like, oh, sorry. And guess who it was? <laughs> Wade Rouse. So he was like, oh my gosh, are you Karen Evans? Did you just post about me on Facebook? And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and anyway, we talked while we walked into the event together. And then after the event, he signed my book and he was like, hey girl. <laughs> and he gave me a hug and he was just so friendly. Um, he is in the process of writing a new book called um, The Picture of Dorian Gay. Um, so yeah, he writes like more cozy books uh, geared towards an older population. And then he writes like crazy crap like this. And I just want his crazy crap. So he said that he's coming out with that new book. Um, he also wrote some book and I don't remember the name of it. I think it's like adventures of a professional mommy handler or something. He writes his, about his experience working at like a prep school, like a boarding school or something. So yeah, he's hilarious. If you just need nonfiction, that's different. Um, my name is Lucy Barton, also met Elizabeth Strout. I sat next to her um, husband at an event, but this book really touched me like deep to my core. I connected to it and um, I've read it a few times and some people find it boring or that there's not enough of a plot or whatever, but like I said, it just touched me to my core and I identified with it. And so this is a super important book to me. So those are all my signed books by authors or that I've met the authors. But really quickly, I wanna go through the other ones on my shelf. And there are two books that I do not have copies of. The first is Educating Esme, which I think I do have a copy of it, but I think it might be at school. Um, that is a book I read every single school year at the beginning of the school year when I'm getting my classroom ready. It is hilarious. I am curious if Doris has read it because I think she would love it too. And yeah, she lives in Chicago. We're Facebook friends. She's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, the other book is The Giver by Lois Lowry, which I have read a lot um, as a kid and as an adult, which was a completely different experience because as an adult, you catch so many more things. And um, I've also taught it in my classroom, so that's why I've read it a few times. For some reason, I don't own a copy, and I think it's just because I've always had a copy at school. But hello, it's one of my favorite books. I definitely need to get a copy. And Lois Lowry is really interesting because I'm pretty sure that it was an um, interview with her where she said that she thinks of questions, things she's wondering about, and she writes a book to figure out the answer to them. And so I find that a really interesting way to get ideas for books. Next, I do have a signed book by this author, but this particular one is not signed and it's The Handmaid's Tale. And again, reading it as a kid and reading it as an adult is a completely different experience and is why I reread it. And just like the next one, which I'm going to show you, which is Fahrenheit 451, both of these, you are kind of amazed at how these authors saw into the future or wrote about things that are actually true today. And that's why I reread this one. My mind was absolutely blown by stuff that just seemed kind of cool when I was a kid. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, but this actually is real. <laughs> Another one I've taught and love and recommend to anyone who has like middle grade kids is Among the Hidden by Margaret Peterson Haddix. It is a great read aloud and it's very exciting. Basically, this boy Luke is the third child in a family when, I don't know what my cat is seeing, but she is going crazy. She's looking at the top of my bookshelf meowing. Um, Luke is the third child born in a society when each family can only have two kids. And so he has to hide, but he's kind of 
getting to the age where he's really frustrated at always having to hide and his brothers get to do this and this and this and he doesn't and um, he is being left at home during the day because of different things that uh, different his family's economic situation and so he gets curious and yeah like I said so exciting and it's a series I've only read the first couple but oh my gosh so good this is another one from my childhood I reread it later and I still equally love it um another good middle grade book for um I wonder if Doris would actually like this one too because I know she reads middle grade from time to time it's called peppermints in the parlor and my teacher read it aloud to us when I was in fourth grade and he would always give us a peppermint to suck on while he was reading um this is about a girl and um if I remember correctly her parents died it's been a while since I reread it and she has to go live with her aunt but when she arrives at her aunt's house it's completely different than um she remembered it and she's in a very very bad and scary situation as you can see by this creepy woman that's there and it's like a mystery it's exciting and again it's a book that's hard to put down and then oh my gosh this video is getting so long dare to lead by Brene Brown it's not necessarily this book but just anything by Brene Brown I will read over and over and over and her audiobooks are even better because she reads them so I've read that book a million times how to do nothing resisting the attention economy by Jenny O'Dell this is an amazing book on just thinking about your life and what you want to spend your time doing and your connection to social media and your presence and all that sort of stuff um, I found it so so interesting I've read it many many times I think at least three or four and um, yeah it's a really good companion to uh, I forgot what it's called but it's a Netflix uh, documentary that is about social media so yeah and then finally <laughs> last one Flourish by Martin Seligman. Um, this book has a lot of tips in it that I have implemented into my own life and I've also implemented it into my students routine in their school day and it's just on like mental health and how to go beyond being happy to flourishing. So those are all the books that I wanted to share with you. I hope you get some ideas for nonfiction November and let me just check back to see if there's any questions I need to answer that I didn't. Um, so is there a book that you found better when you reread it? I think that I kind of shared from these books how I've gotten to a different level of understanding when I've read them again. I don't think there's a book that I've disliked and reread and liked it, but that could change. I'm always open to that. Um, anything that was worse? No. Uh, maybe. Oh, I forgot to say number the stars I've reread a million times. And um, when I reread it, I was kind of um, surprised by how simple it is, but it was again written for really, really young kids. And I have so many good memories of that one with my mom snuggling me in bed, reading that book aloud to me, and then just closing it at really good spots and making me wait until the next night. So even that, even though that book was like, hmm, not quite so good when I reread it, it's like, such a good book in my memory like it has so many good memories for me and I understand that some books as an adult um you aren't going to enjoy as much as when you have them as read them as a child number nine which book have you reread the most times it was probably how to do nothing but yeah those are my books I'm curious if there's any that you've uh, seen in this video that you would like to read and I'm also curious about your response to this tag so I'm not going to tag anyone because I feel like everyone has done this especially since I was tagged like over a month ago but um if you haven't done it and you want to you totally should this was really fun pulling all these books off my shelf and just like remembering all the good memories that I have with them so yeah you guys should totally do this. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you later. Bye.